Courier is sent to the cloud card exclusively. We love growing things. And in the winter, when it gets really cold like it has been this week, we struggle a little bit with not having gardens to dig in or woods we can really forage much in. Right now, our backyard garden and community garden plots are frozen solid, even the cabbages. Luckily, we have something we can cultivate, which is mushrooms. Growing mushrooms indoors is a great way to still feel like you're cultivating something, with the added bonus, of course, that you get delicious food out of it. Oyster mushrooms are an easy fungi to grow both indoors and outdoors because it's so fast growing and aggressive. People have grown oyster mushrooms on anything from old toilet paper rolls to used coffee grounds to clothing. But we like to use our dried garden leftovers like corn stalks. Now that they're dry and brittle, we can chop them up into small pieces for the fungi to more easily digest them. <laughs> Hi. We also add straw for additional nutrition and bulk, which is cheap and easy to get at the farm supply or hardware store. Because both the straw and the corn stalks have been existing in this world out in the air, they likely have other things like mold or bacteria or yeast spores already growing on them. If we create a good environment for our oyster mushroom fungus to grow, we may also inadvertently create a good environment for these things to grow too, which we don't want. So before we add our mushroom spawn into our dried materials, we need to treat them. The most common way to do this is to hot water pasteurize the straw and corn stalks or whatever else you're using by bringing it up to a pretty high temperature and keeping it that way for at least an hour. This of course uses a lot of energy, so we've lately been using a different method and having a lot of success. We add hydrated lime to water and then soak the materials in it overnight. This rapidly increases the pH and that alkalinity will kill off all those contaminants like bacteria or molds. Now, when we introduce our oyster mushrooms, they will have a good head start on anything else that could grow in there. After that, it's a relatively simple process to mix up and fill a bag. We used a bag that we fruited earlier, but you could also buy fresh oyster mushroom spawn online. Oh, you want to tie it? Yeah, I might as well. All right, That's I'll easiest. go get it. One second. Whoa, oh, where did you go? Hey. Well, I do. I feel like I've seen them. Cool. Yeah. Nice. It usually takes about a month for the mushroom mycelium, which is kind of like the roots, to fully take over the bag and start fruiting or producing mushrooms. This makes oyster mushrooms one of the fastest foods you can grow, alongside things like radishes and microgreens. And once they get going, if you give the mushrooms adequate light, oxygen, and high humidity, they will double in size every 24 hours. It's pretty amazing to watch them grow.
<laughs> Once they're big and bountiful and the caps start turning upward, we know they're ready to harvest and turn into something delicious. We'll show you what we make with them, but first, a quick word from this video's sponsor, which is us. We've been growing and foraging food like mushrooms, staple crops like corn and beans, and much, much more for many years now. And we don't wanna brag, but we have gotten pretty good at it. If you want more detailed information on how we grow and forage most of our food with video guides and recipes, then we have just the thing for you, which is our two comprehensive online courses. We share how to set up a low maintenance garden that will really feed you, as well as how to forage sustainably with confidence. These two courses, The Complete Guide to Growing Your Own Food and The Complete Guide to Foraging Your Own Food are on sale now, so check them out at the link in our description below. And if you qualify for SNAP or WIC or similar programs where you are, please get in touch with us about our sliding scale pricing. All right, let's get back to cooking. Harvest that one in a couple of days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those same corn stalks that we crunched up to grow oyster mushrooms on once held beautiful cobs of Wapsie Valley corn, which this week we ground up. It does take some effort and maybe one day we'll get one of those adapters for our mill that lets you use a drill or a bicycle or something for it. But for now, we actually enjoy having the opportunity to work up a sweat when it's so cold. Uh, we do this about once a week, so it's not a daily grind, but it is a weekly grind. Then we sift it out into different sizes of grain, which we'll use for different cooking applications. Fluffy. Super quiet. Wow, that's crazy how fine that is. <laughs> now, where I'm from, we'd call what we made this week grits. But since we're doing more of an Italian preparation, I'll go ahead and call it polenta. Anyway, this polenta is extremely simple to make. It's just cornmeal, water, and some salt and pepper. But as it cooks for a long time and all those little cornstarch pieces gelatinize, it transforms into something smooth and creamy with a deep, rich, corny taste. Yeah, okay. In the meantime. Ooh, that's a 
good looking chunk. Yeah. Oh. Nice. If you bought that amount of oyster mushrooms from the store, oh it'd be God, like a hundred dollars. So <laughs> really light there. Yes. And these are like Well, I guess that's chipmunks that like to gnaw on mushroom tops. Oops. Oops. Squirrels eat mushrooms too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I would. To top it, we made a mushroom ragu with those oyster mushrooms, browning them in some butter before making a sauce with tomato paste, red wine, and lots of garlic and herbs. Comfort food at its finest. You may have noticed that big hunk of Parmesan in our ingredients pile, which wouldn't normally factor into our meals right now. But this is a recipe that we are testing and photographing for our book. So we wanna make sure it's the best it can be, and let's be honest, it's better with some cheese. If you're experiencing these frigid temperatures like we are, I hope you have something warm and comforting to eat. And if you feel like you need a little growth in your life, why not try growing some mushrooms indoors? All right, now that we took 400 pictures of it, <laughs> let's see what it tastes like. Mmm. Good? That's really good. Yay. Mm, mm, mm.